today is the day that the Lord has made. And I know you're saying that with me if you are a regular part of our Bible class. And I just want to thank you this morning for taking time to get into God's Word with me today. As you can tell, the sun is shining right here. And so I'm going to wear my sunglasses in our lesson this morning. Um, but today's lesson 74, and we're going to be looking at Proverbs chapter 26, verses 1 through 12. We got a couple different focus verses today. In fact, there's three of them that are all going to tie in together, and we're going to unravel this mysterious knot, um, how to win an argument effectively. I love, love, love this lesson. So if you haven't scored, you know the drill, take a few moments, get in God's presence, and then let's get in His Word. If you will, let's pray together this morning. Lord, we want to thank you for this beautiful day, for this glorious sunshine, and for the power to be able to communicate effectively, to be well-versed in how to conduct ourselves, Lord, in a way that honors and pleases you. We want to thank you for your word today, and we just pray for a special touch, Lord, that you would anoint the ears of those listening and our hearts to receive in Jesus' name. Amen. Honor is no more associated with fools than snow with summer or rain with harvest. Like a fluttering sparrow or a darting swallow, an undeserved curse will not land on its intended victim. Guide a horse with a whip, a donkey with a bridle, and a fool with a rod to his back. Don't answer the foolish arguments of fools or you will become as foolish as they are. Be sure to answer the foolish arguments of fools or they will become wise in their own estimation. Trusting a fool to convey a message is like cutting off one's feet or drinking poison. A proverb in the mouth of a fool is as useless as a paralyzed leg. Honoring a fool is as foolish as tying a stone to a slingshot. A proverb in the mouth of a fool is like a thorny branch brandished by a drunk. Verse 10 says, An employer who hires a fool or a bystander is like an archer who shoots at random. As a dog returns to its vomit, so a fool repeats his foolishness. And verse 12 says, There is more hope for fools than for people who think they are wise. Have you ever met someone that loved to argue? <laughs> they were quick to react instead of respond, and whatever came to their mind immediately came to their mouth. There were no filters put in place. The Bible talks about them as a foolish person. A wise person is going to be a better listener. But today, our focus verses is um, Proverbs 26, 4, and 5. Answer not a fool according to his folly, lest thou also be likened to him. So a person should never answer a fool by resorting to foolish methods. What are foolish methods? Foolish methods are um, quick-tempered. They're no filter. Um, they're reacting rather than responding, as we talked about before. Easily angered. Um, and verse 5 says, answer a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own conceit. So sometimes a person needs to be exposed for their folly, even if they won't listen. I remember years ago when I would take my kids to parties, they were little, some kind of celebration, they would end up coming home with a helium balloon. And inevitably, if we didn't wrap that ribbon around their wrist and tie it, the balloon would accidentally um, be released and float up into the air and all you could do is say goodbye and there was nothing else you could do and I would look down and my kids would be in tears and uh, be telling the balloon goodbye in tears and we all know that feeling and I think so much of how um, an argument can be so much like a helium balloon before you know it, it can get away with you and you say things you really don't mean, damaging words, hurtful words. You can end relationships with arguments that could be effectively uh, communicated in a way that the argument stops and just conversation and communication continues. So today, I want us to look at ways of deflating the balloon. There are seven effective ways 
to win an argument, if you want to put it that way. Um, you can call it winning or stopping, whatever you want to, but the one that stops the argument is truly the winner. If you can bring peace to a conflict, you are the winner, no matter how the outcome comes. So number one, the first thing is, and if you want to get pen and paper, you can, um, is, is just simply to stay calm. Say that with me, stay calm. <laughs> That's the hardest thing to do because what you have to do is recognize the impact of your own emotions on what's going on. You have to do whatever it takes to self calm first. It's kind of like putting the oxygen mask on first in the airplane. Uh, before you can save anybody else, you gotta save yourself. So you're, you're calming yourself and then you are keeping a calm spirit about you with if the other person uh, in, the, in the scenario is going crazy, you don't need to. Okay, we're talking about how to effectively win an argument. Number two, um, don't retaliate, don't fight back, don't use the words that they're using. Uh, stand strong, be strong in, in, in who you are. You don't have to back down, but don't fight back, okay? The third thing is to listen actively and patiently. That's a really hard thing to do when someone's getting heated in an argument. Uh, because the first thing you want to do is think about what you're going to say and how you're going to attack them back. But the truth is, if you're trying to effectively win this argument, you want to listen. You want to be an active listener. We've talked about listening all through Proverbs. Be patient and actively listen to what they have to say. Most of the time, those three steps will stop an argument. Because if someone knows you're truly interested in what they're saying, then they're going to calm down. Your calm will bring their calm. Okay, the fourth thing is to speak clearly. Have you ever talked, <laughs> have you ever got mad or talked to someone and they just got higher and higher and higher and their voice got faster and I mean, it just gets out of control and, and before you know it, it's just like explosive. But truthfully, the fourth step, speak clearly. Slow down, stay calm and speak clearly. Um, number five, try to understand their, their side. So you're listening to their side and now try to see it from their point. They may be completely wrong. You may be the one that's right, but try to understand where they're coming from. And when they see that you are truly trying to see their point of view, um, it, it does, it puts some peace in the situation. Um, number six, apologize when you're wrong. Verse 12 says, seest thou a man wise in his own conceit? There is more hope of a fool than of him. A lot of times we live in self-deceit because we can't see where we are wrong. But if we look at the whole picture, the big picture, and ask God to show us, show me my heart, show me my motives, show me anything that I'm deceiving myself. I don't want to live in self-deceit because that can get me in a lot of trouble. I may think I'm right and I'm not. Um, so, so, you know, whenever you apologize, whenever you are realize that you're in the wrong, be big enough to say, you know what? I'm sorry. I didn't see that right. Um, I, I didn't understand that correctly. And then finally, seven is focus on things you both agree on. The argument can't continue. Usually the argument will turn into a conversation and you will find in life when you put those seven things in order especially the first three, then you won't have to be in a lot of arguments, but you'll win all of them if you do. These are practical steps that if you'll train yourself at a young age to implement in your life and in your relationships, you will not only be known as a peacemaker, but people will want to be around you. They'll want to talk with you. They'll want your side of the story because they feel your empathy and your compassion and your kindness. Because really kindness kills arguments. Respect kills arguments. And we've talked about all of these things this year. But today, you and I have been given steps on how to effectively win an argument. I hope that blesses you today and tonight when you go home and your little sister or your big brother starts, yang, 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 you'll put these seven steps in order. Hey, post it on your bathroom mirror. You know, put it in the car, wherever you find that a lot of your arguments start. Because I always say that God gave us families at home 
to learn these things so that we can take these valuable life lessons we've learned in home in the house out to those in public so when you get on a public job or you you go to college or wherever life leads you you will have already learned how to have good relationships and especially how to effectively win an argument god bless have a wonderful day